1976, John Candy stepped from stage to screen in the ideal Second City parody, a scathing satire on television. SCTV went on to become one of the most critically acclaimed shows of its kind and firmly established John Candy as a brilliant comedic actor. Saturday Night Live had gone on the air already, and we were all eyeballing the United States and seeing what, what other work is down there. And our producers at the time figured they had to move fast, so they got a make work project. They said, would you boys like to do a TV show? I said, yeah, all right. This was the beginnings of our knowledge in television and uh, how we learned our craft. Uh, never trust anyone at school. <laughs> I was in a, a, a bad hotel room in Worcester, Ohio, on tour with the Great Lake Shakespeare Festival, um, and up late and not able to sleep, and turned on this thing that was called Second City TV. And the very first episode I saw was the Leave it to Beaver episode where John was playing the beaver. The, uh, what I was seeing was, it, it, was uh, it was like hearing the Beatles for the first time. Beaver, I'm afraid you're going to have to explain yourself. Gee, Dad, I hated him. Besides, he was always calling me a bum. Beaver, after all I told you about taking the law into your own hands, June, call the police. Boy, Dad. Wally. He's just going to have to learn his lesson. Maybe 35 years in the slammer will teach the beaver something. Boy, Wally, life stinks. Yeah, but so do you, beaver. Yeah, thanks, Wally. Well, SCTV generally celebrated characters. I mean, it's it, it wasn't so much oriented toward jokes as character work and character observation, and I think John was the greatest character of that cast. When you sat in a room and brainstormed, John's concepts were the best. It was John that thought of throwing the TVs out the window, and it was John who thought of half of the really kind of interesting concepts that came up on SCTV. So I, I thought he could do everything, and I thought he could do everything, you know, exceptionally well. Can I be candid with you folks at home? Now tell me honestly, do you think that the Olivier's of this world, the Andy Devines of this world, do you think they had to beg for a crane shot? I think. Therefore, I am not. Can you imagine Wild Bill Hancock and Jingles begging for a crane shot? Well, I had to. I had to beg for every crane shot I ever got. I had to beg, borrow, and steal. And I got plenty and nothing. Ain't nothing plenty for me. I got the sun in the morning, in the moon at night. Remember that we all got into wearing beards and wigs and mustaches and, you know, anything that kind of made our face look different, where we thought we were getting into kind of a, you know, silly look and a silly character. And John, you know, no, 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 no mustache for me. I'll just, you know, I'll just, uh, you know, act. <laughs> Hello, I'm Yash Mengi. And I'm Stan Schmengi. And, and we, we are the Happy Wanderers. <laughs> Gene and I were writing a scene in, in an Edmonton hotel room when we were watching a local polka show. And we said, boy, there's that schmangy for you. And that light bulb went on over both our heads and said, yeah, yeah, the schmangies. <laughs> oh. I think it was a very innocent, um, easy thing for us to do because it was a sensibility that we both, you know, kind of shared, which was doing comedy without without a very hard edge to it, you know, a comedy where you're not really putting anybody down, where you're not making fun of anybody. Good morning, Mrs. Valvo. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, Mr. Messenger. And where are we going? Pray ten. I'm all prepared to pick up and pound the pavement. Oh, that's very good, boys and girls. You see, today, Mr. Messenger and I are going off to prison, the Melinville Maximum Security Prison. And why are we going there, Mr. Messenger? To kill some time. That's right, to kill some time. No, sir, to kill some time. I want to kill some time. I, I think John just kind of in spite of himself was just the truth, spoke the truth, he was the truth, he was authentic, he was the real thing. And, um, and I think he was blessed also with never second guessing that, certainly the, in the public persona. Well, when I think of John, I think of his generosity and his uh, kindness. 
I think of uh, someone who was very gifted, who, who shared those gifts uh, with a lot of people. He was very much the family man. He loved his children and his wife. Father Robert Hale married John and his wife Rose in April 1979. The next year, their daughter Jennifer was born, and their son Christopher was born in 1984. The role of family man fit John perfectly and enriched his life on the set of SCTV. For John Candy, life was sweet in SCTV's fictional town of Mellonville, on the air for over seven years and garnering 13 Emmy nominations, two Emmy Awards, and an Actor Award, SCTV created a loyal following. I was so impressed watching SCTV, uh, um, the work he was doing on that, because it was so close to, it's like, it was like my town, you know, Mellonville was, I, oh God, I, I lived there, and all those characters that he did were people that I knew, and, you know, and I, I, sort of, I said, I know how he's doing this. In 1983, John left SCTV. Taking advantage of his critical success and mass appeal on television, he headed for Hollywood, where, with films like Stripe... I got cast in, in Splash, and uh, Ron telling me that John Candy was going to play my brother, I, I felt as though I was working with the legendary Second City TV alumnus John Candy, and I was thrilled. Yes, One no. more second, Mr. McCullough. I'm in Penthouse Magazine! They printed my letter! They printed my letter! Oh, listen, I'm very, very I'm happy. I'm in the forum, sir. The story's entitled, A Lesbian No More. They printed every word I wrote. It's a beautiful story. Here, I want copies of this for everybody. Augie! Hey! Good to see you! It wasn't like working. It was just a. Uh, it was just a gas. It was. It was just this kind of fun that required us to be concentrated, that required us to be ready to do it. But that was not work. It wasn't a chore in order to get together and do this stuff. Who? 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 Big fella? Who? Settle down. <laughs> I believe you dropped your hat, Miss Henderson. Thank you. I, you saved my life. What? Well, haven't we met? Perhaps. And perhaps we'll meet again. Yeah! Dying for me. I love this. It's something that you can't ask an actor to do. Either up on the screens, people are instinctively rooting for somebody or they're not rooting for somebody. And John is just somebody that people rooted for. I'm so at home on a set. <laughs> you know, okay, just, guys. oh yes, lamps, dirty floors, and cables. I mean, I, that, I could, I, I could be there all day. I think that's part of the reason why I like to work so much. I love it. Yeah, they want to do this thing.